this gentleman presented with progressive memory impairment axial t2 mri and swa images shows dilated tortuous cortical veins this was again witnessed on post contrast t1 imaging this raised the possibility of dural arteriovenous malformation left internal carotid artery injection showed absence of cortical vein drainage in the left transverse and sigmoid sinus left vertebral artery injection and left ec injection shows a dural fistula along the left transverse sigmoid junction supplied by middle mandibular artery and dural arteries of the occipital artery embolization was performed through the left middle mandibular artery O uh, four four catheter was taken as high as possible into the middle meningeal artery. A marathon one point five French microcatheter was navigated over O O eight wire as distal as possible, close to the fistula. When there are corkscrew type vessels, we make a loop at the tip of the wire, take the guiding catheter high as possible, and then navigate these loops with the wire. We see the microcatheter as close to the fistula as possible. One can appreciate the middle meningeal artery and occipital artery feeders. There was no cortical vein drainage into the segment of the sinus, and therefore onyx was injected into the sac that was draining into the sinus, and part of the sinus was also taken. Once anterograde penetration into the venous sac and the sinus is achieved, retrograde penetration into all the feeders, including the occipital middle meningeal, was achieved. You note the occipital artery feeders being percolated by the onyx now. This is the final onyx cast. There was complete occlusion of the fistula. We put the patient on injectable low molecular weight heparin to prevent thrombosis of the cortical veins. There was complete occlusion of the fistula by the end of the procedure.